Does anybody remember A Bug's Life? I feel like it's a Pixar movie that gets less love due to it being wedged between Toy Story 1 and 2. Then after that you have the 1, 2, 3 punch of Monsters Inc., Finding Nemo, and The Incredibles. So I guess I'm not too shocked to see that it gets lost amongst the rest of the Pixar catalog. I mean, it also came out the same year as the DreamWorks movie Ants, and it probably doesn't help that when I talk about the animated insect movie from 1998 and somebody asks me, is that the one where alleged sex pest Woody Allen voices an ant? Yeah. And then I have to be like, no, 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 the one where alleged sex pest Kevin Spacey voices a grasshopper. But nevertheless, the film left an impression on me as a kid, specifically because of the villain, Hopper, and more pointedly, due to one villainous scene. For those of you who don't know, A Bug's Life was essentially inspired by the fable of the grasshopper and the ant, while also being an unofficial adaptation of Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. It's not the first to do this, and I'm certain it won't be the last. It's a great story model after all. Poor villagers are raided by ruthless bandits who plunder their hard-earned food every harvest season. <laughs> I'll be back. Enough. We get the rest when we come back. Ooh. <laughs> To remedy this, the villagers seek help from a band of warriors who both protect and train the villagers to defend themselves against the bandits. The twist here is that a troop of circus performers are mistaken for great fighters and clever hijinks ensue. The caterpillar's using himself as live bait! How brave! In A Bug's Life, the ants provide food to the grasshoppers every harvest season or face retribution. And things are looking good until an inventive and well-meaning ant named Flick has a little accident. You know what, in Flick's defense, maybe you shouldn't put the all-important offering on the edge of a cliff right below a body of water. Just a thought. Princess Anna! Princess Anna! The arrival of the grasshoppers is treated almost like a horror movie. First, all the ants retreat into their hole as a dull hum grows louder and a sinister shadow begins to loom over the ant hill. Inside, the ants cower in dread. Mothers are holding their children close. Others are just quietly freaking out. It's an unsettling atmosphere, to say the least. And because of Flick's accident earlier, the grasshoppers are less than pleased. <laughs> Then we meet Hopper. It's an intimidating introduction. He just stalks around wordlessly and everybody avoids him before he even says a line. So where is it? Where's my food? I really dig Hopper as a bad guy. Say what you will about Kevin Spacey, but he plays a villain to perfection. Maybe because he's a villain in real life. <laughs> The character gives me Hades vibes, but he's much more of a threat. His posture is relentlessly menacing. He towers over everyone, including his own men. And even the slightest annoyance will trigger his wrath. Isn't it up there? What? The food was in a leaf sitting on Excuse top. me? Are you sure it's not up there? If it was up there, would I be coming down here to your level looking for it? In an interesting deviation from Seven Samurai or other variations of the story, rather than being simple bandits, the grasshoppers operate more like a classic mafia. If you don't keep your end of the bargain, then I can't guarantee your safety, and there are insects out there that will take advantage of you. I bring that up because we also meet Hopper's dim-witted and easily influenced brother, Malt, who is a constant irritation. I swear, if I hadn't promised Mother on her deathbed that I wouldn't kill you, Kill you. And believe me, no one appreciates that more than I do. <laughs> so, it's a reverse Fredo situation, and that's hilarious to me. I said, do you understand me? Well, how can I answer? You said I couldn't say another word. Dad, remember Ma? So anyway, Hopper is going to feed a kid to his... Dog? 
I'm not even gonna try and unpack that. That's a Goofy and Pluto situation, <laughs> but Flick protests. Leave her alone. Hopper shuts him down. Get back in line. And he gives the ants a deadline to gather more food before they return. We'll be back at the end of the season when the last leaf falls. Now, I regaled you with all of that to talk about this scene. About halfway through the movie, we see what the grasshoppers are up to, partying and living it up without a care in the world. They have enough food to last for a while, and some of the grasshoppers really don't see a need to return. So they convince Malt to talk to his brother for them. You're his brother? That makes you like the vice president of the gang. Wow, it kind of does, doesn't it? Malt, okay. being the dullard that he is, thinks it's a swell idea, so he goes to talk to Hopper. One little detail I love about this scene is that Hopper is relaxing on a bullet. It's little touches like that that imply that he's still dangerous, even when at rest. Anyway, Hopper doesn't like the plan, but rather than take it out on his brother, the gears start turning in a different direction. <laughs> Guys, order another round, because we're staying here! Yeah. A word that comes to mind with this scene is tension. We've seen Hopper feign this kind of demeanor before. He's not exactly great at hiding his anger. Hey, I'm a compassionate insect. We know it's an act, but as you can see, his minions aren't as quick on the uptake as the audience is. But there was that ant that stood up to me. It was just one ant. Ooh. One ant. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's just one ant. We know something's coming. It may be an angry outburst. He might even hit somebody. Say, let's pretend this brain is a puny little ant. Did that hurt? <laughs> nope. Well, how about this one? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> well, how about this? Jesus. <laughs> I just want to break this down. The abruptness of it. The roar of the grain crashing down, drowning out the screams of the dissenting grasshoppers. The remorseless look on Hopper's face. It's all so unnerving. But the scene's not over yet. He just murdered three of his own men to prove a point, which is... You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. It's an unforgettable scene. I hadn't watched this movie in a while, but I could almost quote Hopper's speech word for word. It had a profound effect on me as a kid, and it was only when I got older that I began to realize why. For most, if not all, human history, there have been those who have power and those oppressed by those in power. The haves and the have-nots. The monarchy and the commoners. Help! Help! I'm being repressed, bloody peasant! The bourgeoisie and the proletariat. The 1% and the 99%. There have always been those on top, and unfortunately, for the foreseeable future, it looks like it might stay that way for a while. <laughs> Or we could wise up and rise up like the ants. That could be a possibility, who knows? Now, am I saying that a bug's life is Marxist propaganda for your children? Yes. I mean, kind of, I guess. Sure. Uh, technically, the ants own the means of production, so to call it Marxist propaganda is a bit of a misnomer. All right, get out of here. Uh. Okay, I say it half-heartedly because honestly, you don't need to have Marxist or socialist leanings to know that the grasshoppers are in the wrong. Right? At least, I hope you wouldn't. Who roots for the grasshoppers? They disproportionately benefit off the hard labor of others. They suck. You are mindless, soil-shoving losers. Put on this earth to serve us. I guess you could even step outside of the left-leaning echo chamber and say that grasshoppers are a lot like, uh, big government? And the food is like, taxes? And the ants are the hard-working, salt-of-the-earth types who just want to be left alone? My takeaway from it was communism bad. 
That was my takeaway from it. That'd be an interesting argument to make. I don't think it's as obvious as the other one, but what are you going to do? All I'm saying is, as a kid, the intensity of the scene stuck with me, but I couldn't really understand why. But now, with a little more world weariness, this moment hits differently. I think Hopper is a great villain because his motives are understandable, but appalling. He's a guy who likes things how they are, and he wants to keep the status quo. I don't think he sees himself as the hero of his own story. I don't even know if he has that frame of reference. All he cares about is that he's on top, and he wants it to stay that way. He's a twisted mirror of reality, a stand-in for the ruling class, albeit boiled down to the basic elements for children to understand. We're a lot stronger than you say we are. And you know it, don't you? So yeah, I guess, in a sense, my guiding principles started to form at an early age. You know, sharing is caring. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And rise up, fellow workers, we have nothing to lose but our chains. You see, Hopper, nature has a certain order. The ants pick the food, the ants keep the food, and the grasshoppers leave. But sadly, life isn't like the movies. Reality is full of grasshoppers, and often they manage to escape justice or even accountability. And when they're gone, they're replaced by more just like them, or worse. Life goes on and on without an end in sight, and history repeats itself, almost comically. The best that we as a society can do is try to recognize and identify exploitation of others and do our best to call it out. I think that's a lesson that everybody can learn from A Bug's Life, and especially that one villainous scene. Well, that's kind of a downer to end it on. How about some catharsis? This is a Disney film after all, and unlike reality, if you're the bad guy, one way or another, you're gonna get what's coming to you. And Hopper certainly gets his. Oh, no! Hey folks, uh, sorry if that got a little too political for you. I don't intend to do that with every video. I just found it hard to talk about this scene without that kind of analysis. But uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think of A Bug's Life. I think it holds up. It's certainly one of my favorite Pixar films and I feel like it's underrated. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Also, I've been trying to think of a catchphrase in my videos on and for the life of me, I can't think of one that I don't hate. If you could help me out by leaving a comment regarding that down below, that would be immensely helpful. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, share with your friends and family, and uh, 